So thank you very much again, okay, for his invitations, and uh, I'm really glad to be here among friends and so on. And I'm going to talk about something which has to do with um, a very paramount problems, maybe the biggest problem that we have right now, okay, which is the, the problem of energy. And um, so I'm going to try to explain to you how we could maybe uh, produce energy with uh, energy not just produce the energy, but we have to produce energy with an abundant amount. It has to be clean, it has to be safe. Okay, how can we do all that? And so we, I, I devised with some of my friends, including also uh, friends who are here, uh, a way to do it by using very high intensity laser, what we call extreme light. And with extreme light, we, will, we could be able to really to exploit nuclear energy in a very safe way. So this is what I'm, I'm going to tell you about. Okay. So indeed, uh, it's going to be very much based on science and technology, my talk. Okay. Here is the Earth, our spacecraft. Traveling for more than 4 billion years through space with 8 to 10 billion people on board. The total consumed oh, power is of the order of 100,000 power plants. We have some sound. Houston, we have a problem. We are running mostly on carbon energy that will be exhausted in a few hundred years. In addition, it creates a nefarious climate change and air pollution that will sound. render in a few hundred years the Earth unlivable. I think we have a solution. Our advice is to consider nuclear fuel. You have enough thorium on Earth for a few thousand years. Thorium used in an advanced driven system reactor, ADS, will produce only a small amount of short lived nuclear waste. The clip said that nuclear energy is not escapable. Okay? We need, we are going to need it. Okay? And um, <coughs> the nuclear energy, of course, has the advantage to have zero carbon dioxide problems. Okay? We have an ample amount of of supplies, 10,000 years, maybe 20,000 years, okay? And nuclear energy is a million times more efficient than coal, okay? So, but nuclear energy, of course, has a problem, is because as you are producing energy, you have also to produce this this waste, this nuclear waste, you know, which is really bad, okay? So it's where we are going to use extreme light to correct for this. You know, if you take a typical power plant, you know, power plants of a gigawatt, power plants we can really provide energy for a city of a million people, We have to produce 8 billion kilowatt hours per year, which means that if you do that with coal, it will take you 3 million tons of coal, which means 100 trains of 100 wagons of coal. And of course, you are going 
to produce a bundle amount of carbon dioxide. Now, if you are doing, you go nuclear, but you are going using uranium with coal, you are going to use only 300 tons, and you will produce no carbon dioxide. Finally, if we are using thorium, you, can only, you need only one ton of thorium to do the same job, and you will produce zero liters of carbon dioxide. Now, as I said, we have to do it in a very clean way because otherwise we know that you know, uh, nuclear energy has, has some problems. Okay? Now let's see if we cannot really solve these problems. Okay? So we are going to use a special type of lasers. We call extreme light lasers. And these lasers are producing extremely short bursts of light. The, the durations of the burst of light is a millions of a billionth of a second. Why do you want to do that? Why do you want to do that, to produce this teeny tiny uh, short pulse? It's because if you want really extreme power, the power is energy divided by time. If you remember, you know, that's the only thing that you remember. And of course, if you uh, take a small amount of energy, joules, which is, very, you know, peanuts, okay? and you de deliver these tools in a femtosecond, that is, in a millions of a billions of them, then you are producing power at the petawatt level. That is, the power of the world grid. Okay? So, of course, for femtoseconds. And um, <coughs> so, uh, you can see that already why you like really to get these very, very short pulses, okay? But it's not enough, okay? And uh, so you have also, you can produce other things which are amazing, okay? As I said, you can produce very, very high peak power, petawatts, the world peak power, you know, uh, the world... Uh, but you can produce also very, very high temperatures in a billions, that is, in a billions of degrees, okay? And which is hotter than the center of the sun, okay? You can also produce extremely large pressure, pressure so large that the equivalent of millions Eiffel Towers on the tip of your fingers. Try to do that. The other thing which is amazing also, and we are going to use it, because we have this incredible punch, you know, very, very high pressure, but for very short times. You have an incredible punch. Then you can really accelerate particles you are going to need that, okay? From zero to the speed of light in a femtosecond. They are incredible accelerations, okay? Which correspond to 10 to the 25 G, which means here a billions of a billions of a billions of gravity, okay? Let's think about that. You know, you, you go to, in order to go from zero to 100 kilometers an hour, it takes you a few seconds, okay? Here, we can really push a particle from zero to the speed of light in one femtosecond. Okay, and now, 
And you will see that we are going to use this, these new incredible tools, okay? And we will use it in a way that it could revolutionize nucle nuclear power productions. And I'm going to say a few words about this. So now I'm going to use this, these tools to produce radiations or, uh, that you are going to use, okay, after that. And, and what is nice is uh, um, what we, and you will understand in a minute why you want to do that, you want to use, uh, uh, you want to be able right, to accelerate particles, like electrons are particles, you know. We are completely, you are, we are of course filled of particles like electrons, like protons. Some of the particles are very, very, I mean, electrons, of course, are very <laughs> useful. They are all, in fact, very useful. Uh, but other particles, like uh, protons, are very useful. Also, to, but to be useful, they have to go at very high speeds. They have to be relativistic. They have to have energy. And uh, so, but with our laser and with the ability to have this incredible punch, you know, then we can take a really, a very thin piece of materials, shine the laser, and we, you know, in one hand, and on the other hand, you get the uh, particles. At, at, at an incredible energy. And uh, that we are going to, so, and this, so if you want, be here I'm showing GEV, uh, which are, I'm not going to describe it, but the high energy uh, particles with my petawatt lasers. I will replace, because now we can do also giga electron volt protons. And this, for instance, is an accelerator, which is provided one giga electron volt electrons. But you know, it's not few micrometers in thickness. This thing is almost a kilometer long. And it's because we get this incredible punch that we can do that. So now, why do you need these this, this high energy particles? Okay. First of all, I hope, yeah. In medicine, you know that there's a lot of nuclear medicine. You have ter in therapy, you know, in diagnostics, you have that. You have one thing which is uh, very important, you know, for if you, are if you unfortunately get cancer, you have proton therapy. So the proton that we can accelerate then can be used to, to, to really burn a tumors. You can do that also with x-rays. You can do that with electrons. But the problem with this, if you have a tumors which in your brain, which is lodged in the tissue, within the tissues of your uh, body, then uh, with this normal therapy, you, if you want to burn the tumor, you are going to burn also what is in front of the tumor, which are healthy tissue. So you don't want to do that. The protons have, have a good idea to not to be absorbed, but they, you can manage to aim at the tumors, burn the tumors, while the, f the tissue in front of the tumors are stay unaffected. So this is really just to show you that we can use high energy protons to do good things. Now, of course, the ultimate things is what I'm going to talk about is, of course, energy. We know, as I said, we are going to s be starving about energy. Right? We are going to, we have a few hundred years if we go this way, you know, with carbon energy. So we have we better, better work on, you know, working on energy. I have nothing against going to Mars, but, I mean, we should really worry also what's going on on Earth, and we know that you don't have to be a, a Nobel Prize winner to know that 
we are going to be have, have a problems. This is, uh, uh, so as I mentioned on, in the clip, nuclear, we have nuclear fuel, like thorium and so on, really for us, for 10,000, 20,000, for 10 billion people. So huge amount. Now, as I said, we have to make it safe. So one way to, 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 to extract this energy, which is, an <coughs> is by using fusions, for instance. Fusions is really based on light elements like hydrogens or hydrogen isotopes. And we are going to convince them to fuse, which is very difficult, except if you have really a big hammer, like I sh showed you, you know, with the short pulse, with very, very we can produce very, very large pressures. And this is what's going on in the sun, okay? So it works, we know that. <laughs> so this is one thing, trying to do fusions, because we have these short pulses, we have this phenomenal light pressure that we can use to do fusion in, very, in different ways that what is being tried to do now. And the other way is fission. And the fission is just a converse, is you are using a large nucleus like uh, thorium or uranium and, and so on, and you are going to fission it, and you will fission by neutrons, particles, that you have accelerated by the lasers. Okay. So these are really the growl. Okay. This is what uh, we have to work. I mean, these are not the only way to do it, but I can show you that there is new, novel techniques, you know, to harness the nuclear energy in a safe manner. Okay. And we were with my co-laureate, because I shared this, um, the Nobel Prize with uh, uh, Donna Strickland, with my co-laureate, uh, we discussed that with the Pope. And of course, you know, he was very, very much on board. And, uh, uh, and at the end we said, let's save the planet. Let there be extreme light. Thank you very much.